Pedro from EMP Reacts. I'm here today with Harry of Hooded Menace to talk about the upcoming record that Tritonus spell out August 27th on Season of Mist. How's it going with you? It's going, it's going fine, yeah. I'm, I'm actually uh, getting more and more excited about the, the release, approaching release date because it's, uh, it's been a while, like uh, once in a month, single out sort of thing. So now it's finally the, the moment is getting near. So, yeah. Yeah, you, you could see the light at the end of the tunnel getting brighter and brighter. Yeah, yeah sort of. <laughs> Death will come. With everything that's happening in the world today with this pandemic, was this a difficult record to put together for you guys? No, it was actually, this band is, um, compared to the other bands I've, I've been working with and I, I'm doing, I'm working with, this is a, a bit different band, sort of band. Uh, although it's a band with several members and stuff, not like, unlike the, at the, at the beginning of the band when it was only Lasse. Uh, but even though it's, it's uh, several members nowadays, it's still the, all the songwriting for this band is Lasse's work. So, and it's not all, only about the songwriting, it's, all, it's about production and all that stuff too, arrangements and stuff. So it's, a, it's pretty much the, all the preparing work is, is done by Lasse and we all just, we just uh, do our part and do the best job we can. So it's a, uh, it's this has been, I could say, like almost hundred percent same kind of a process than the, the last one, uh, excluding of course the songwriting because I I haven't been doing any of that, so I can talk uh, for Lasse's behalf about that, but. Uh, like all the all the recording and stuff it's been it's been all the same so it's we don't we, we're not affected by pandemic like to be honest yeah yeah, yeah. yeah everything stays the same for you he does the work and then you guys come in and you have to bring his vision to life yeah and he's a, he's a pretty specific like about the the whole like production and arrangements and stuff so it's it's kind of a like following the notes sort of thing that we just like and and kind of a, we are the ones like picked by Lasse to do the job to the right persons to to um, make his vision alive sort of thing like of course he he did the the first full length of who did Menace all by himself so he's he's able to do like all the stuff but not like he, because he's he wanted wants to like uh to have uh, the different kind of uh like for, for me, for example, like well, different kind of vocals. Mm -hmm. I can I can I can do all the stuff Lasse could do, but I can do some things Lasse couldn't do. So now now he's like the last two albums, he he wanted to do something differently, something differently, and like that's why I'm here. <laughs> experimenting <laughs> so, a experimenting a little bit more. And, and speaking of the last two records. What do you feel sets this album apart from its predecessor? Uh, I think it's pretty, uh, the obvious one is, uh, are the, the heavy metal elements mm -hmm. that are more, more uh, audible and sort of a present throughout the album. Of course, there's always been like, whenever you talk about like doom metal, you have the classic heavy metal roots yeah, and yeah. all the melodies and stuff. So it's it's not like it's something some alien part of of doom to have heavy metal elements. But now this one has more about more of those uh, say eighties eighties classic heavy metal yeah. sounds and and riffs and all that stuff. So it's a uh, if if the last one also Arm Silhouette Silent Hello it was more like a it, it it had some of those things going on and more like this um even some of that like like british uh, death doom sort of things going on now now it's 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 a bit more la to it <laughs> like with the riffs and stuff <laughs> like 
I, I really want to dive into that because I really feel like what you guys did with this record in terms of adding that classic 80s style and, and not just adding, but really allowing it to be one of the elements that impacts the experience of the record. I, I think it's really what sets this album apart. I, I agree with you. But before we get into that, let me ask you this about the structure of the record. I love the fact that you guys start off the album with an intro, with an instrumental intro that kind of sets the table for the record, and then you finish it off with an instrumental outro. It, it really creates these two perfect bookends if, if, you, if you're looking at it, and then all the different books and chapters are all in the middle. Uh, was that the design from the beginning to have an album that feels like compact like this and having this sort of easing me in to the listening experience and then kind of opening the door so I can exit that listening experience at the end? Um, I, I have my opinions about that. I, I now now I have to underline this. Like, this is my like my my view of things. Lasse may have thought it different way, like compiling the album and writing it. But yeah, I, I think it's a it's pretty uh, like sort of essential thing to have those intros and outros to set the mood and like release you from the and and. Uh, Especially when the when the ultra has, uh, it just like turns the knob even to the more like eleven sort of thing with the, all those guitar solos and guitar, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's kind of a, it's um like like a, what what could be a, like a good metaphor like when you have the the juice with all the all the all the like. Uh, fruit meat in the bottom of your of your orange juice like the last drop and it's 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 the sweetest like <laughs> sort of thing so it's kind of a i, I think uh the intro is is more like a, in, an intro yeah mm -hmm. it, like it sets the mood it's not like um like like many times it's not the the most important track of the album but it's it's really ne like still essential to get under the mood on the mood, but uh, but uh, the outro, I think it's it's adds something a little bit more like element you could have not imagined to be present at the any of those like full tracks, but it's it's more like that sweet like like last thing going now. Here we go. <laughs> it, it, it's funny that you say it this way because once again, I I don't know what what Lasse had in his mind when he was putting it together, but I share my the same opinion as you. Because listening to this album, you hear that that 80s heavy metal sound throughout. But when you get to that outro, there's nothing hiding it. So it really just jumps into the forefront. And you're like, wow, this is what's been there all along. But now finally, like, I'm able to just really see the forest from the trees, if you will, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's, and it's pretty bold, I think. Like, like if, if anyone would listen like only one track of Hood and Menace and would listen to that outro, they would they would like they wouldn't have a clue about the whole discography. It's like it's that different, but like you said, it's not like in the context mm -hmm. as an outro for all the, those tracks, it's it's not out of place, it's right on its place. What, what do you think that 80s uh, influence, that 80s classic heavy metal, new wave of British heavy metal, if you want, if you want to go that far, what do you think that adds to Hooded Menace in terms of, of the soundscape on a record? Um, again, my opinion is, uh, I, I think it's, uh, it's kind of a, it's, it's kind of like a make it fresher, it, it like in two ways, of course, the obvious ways uh, that compared to the other records it's it's a new element new dimension to it like something that sets it sets this record apart from the others but it's also like uh, in terms of the if like um having an like a, a sense of the sound it's like if the the la later ones the previous albums have been more like this um, dirty, muddy, mm -hmm. rotten sort of uh, feel. Now it's, uh, of course, it's all there and all the melancholy and all those like, like dirty death metal riffs are still there. But it's with the, the heavy metal plus the sound that like uh, supports the whole heavy metal sound, like 
bit tighter, bit uh, crunchier sound. It makes it a. Uh, it's not like. It's not all this like digging the grave sort of thing. There's some like maybe even some flowers blooming out of the yeah, graveyard. Yeah, there's some there's some light in the darkness. Yeah, 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 freshness like like you can finally smell the flower of those like those corpses actually. <laughs> <laughs> is, is is this I th I thought listening to the record uh, when I think of death doom, and when I think of death doom coming from Finland, uh, I'm very well versed in, in the Finnish sound. So I, I, I always feel like you can tell a band is coming from Finland, specifically when it comes to death doom. There's a, a very specific melancholy. There's a very specific aroma to go with your analogy of the flowers. There's a very specific smell that you, you could tell when you're listening to the band. Adding this heavy metal sound to it, do you, do you feel like it kind of breaks you guys a little bit away from that? traditional Finnish death doom sound that that it, it's it's so predominant across bands that are playing that genre coming out of Finland yeah and I, I think it's uh, it sets apart apart the band apart a bit from death doom in general like like uh, I'm not an I'm not an expert of death doom like the whole genre I I have my my favorites but I it's there are lots of stuff I I haven't been digging in like that well, but still like it's it's not I, I I at least I don't hear that much like classic heavy metal things going on with Death Doom. Like it's it's something I, I feel this it sets the band and the sound apart from the the whole genre in general. So yeah, yeah, I I can agree the specific Finland part from that point of view, of course. Do, do, do you like the more up tempo sound? Is is something that you enjoy on these new tracks? Uh, I I enjoy it. Yeah, it's a like it's it's being different and it's a it's a for me as a vocalist, it uh, allows me to like do different kind of things like like all the rhythms. Of course, the 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 rhythmic parts have been like like I said, Lasse writes all the things. He also arranges the vocals, like specific rhythms and stuff. So it's it's all his his craft. <laughs> but but it's that. But still, like doing that and uh, and what I, what I can do with my voice with those rhythms. It's when there's more this um, yeah the up tempo stuff. There are more uh, there there are different things to uh, to work with and. Uh, and experiment with with the voice and like it's a it's a at least it's fun to do and like, yeah it's for you yeah. perhaps it's more of a buffet uh in terms of what you can do with your vocals versus just yeah. having like, this pigeonhole that i i have to do this on every single track yeah yeah, yeah. and I, I think it's a it's a it may be the one of the things uh, uh the reasons why i am i am doing the vocals nowadays instead of last doing them himself is like now he can like, like I, I really like his 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 voice and his his way of doing that really gnarly, uh, really like rotten low low growl. Yeah. I like his, his style, but it's like it has its limitations, mm -hmm. and and that's why he's kind of a. That, I I think that that's one of the reasons I'm here. Like because now he's he's got an urge to do that kind of stuff. He wants to put more dynamic to it. So it's uh, now. My, my me doing the second album now it's kind of a now now, we, now i've got like myself in the band and I've got like maybe could even say learned the way of of the band sort of so it's now it was here yeah mm -hmm. to back to get get on the board and and more free to to do like like i feel to where does the inspiration for the lyrics come from? Because I, I felt like you guys created a record where the lyrics and the sound really goes together as one. Uh, it, it's it's almost like the sound becomes the soundscape or the soundtrack of what you guys are singing about of the lyrical content. So where does that inspiration come from? Uh, I think that when you look at the, the early discography of the band, it's, uh, it was more straightforward uh, uh, horror movie reference sort of thing 
sometimes even like really cheesy, like you can like find the exact name of the characters <laughs> from the lyrics. But since the like the first couple of albums, it's been evolving more and more into the abstract, like sort of uh, um, like setting the mood sort of thing. And I I think it's I I really agree that. Uh, they support together, uh, they, like the lyrics and uh, sound support uh, each other. Each other, yeah, each other. But uh, it's a. Uh, I think it's even like the vice versa. It's not like the sound is like supporting the lyrics, but actually the lyrics are written sort of uh, give you another idea about the the music. Which is the like the the meat of the whole thing, and when you add the graphic, the visuals and stuff, it's another like a uh, uh, colorful layer on that on the top of the whole thing. But I I think that yeah, it's it's more like with uh, the lyrics try to try to make make uh, make the most out of the out of the music, which is there originally. So it's, a, it's it's always like that. There's always first the music and then comes the lyrics and the lyrics are just like to support the music as well as, as they can. But yeah, it's a, I, I think the inspiration, it still comes, there's all, many of the tracks have some maybe horror movie inspiration, but it's, it's, it's more like an inspiration nowadays than like a straightforward reference. Like <laughs> So it's now 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 we there there can be uh, the starting point for the lyrics can be uh, can be uh, some exact movie but it it can also be uh, an image or uh, an atmosphere of some like theatrical stuff or or from some movie but it it, it may go like a long way from there like you, you when you have the final lyrics you you can't there's no way sometimes even the spot which which movie it was the inspiration I, I think it's 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 how we want to leave it nowadays because it's it it's not like we want to add our favorite movies on the on the on the on the record but it's more like to, to have the the songs work as as well as they can uh, you, you spoke about how now you have the ability to be a little bit more diverse uh, with your vocals in terms of how this record is constructed was there a song that was specifically difficult that give you some some gray hairs perhaps mm, and not exactly i think uh i think it was it was pretty easy to do like every song i, I think i uh i took as as much time on every single track i think like e pretty much equally and it was really like schedule stuff today we do this and this like Within these hours, and it was always like that. So it was, it was like, it, like I said, it's now. Now it's the second album I'm doing this, so it's. Not, I don't have to sort of try try to find a way how my my voice works with those kind of things. But uh, I think the 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 trickiest one was the was the one we didn't actually do on the on the album. It was um, it was the cover we uh, first time tried tried to do but we decided to leave it off because uh, vocal wise it didn't kind of make sense uh I, I don't know if you if you know that there's a special edition cd coming from the from the album and it, there's a wasp cover mm -hmm. the torture never stops on it yes um, and that that worked well but uh before we did that we did a demo uh of, of uh, judas priest's nightcrawler and it, as as much as I love Judas Priest, I I was really uh, like excited about like just to just to bow my myself to the <laughs> heavy metal god <laughs> and all this stuff. But it, like compared to the Wasp song, Judas Priest is always so vocal driven stuff. Mm -hmm. Like all, all the all the, uh, the of course the guitars are like really really the thing over there too but still Halford's 
vocals and especially like on the songwriting, the vocal harmonies and the melodies are the thing. So even though the riff sounded riff sounded good, but it, it's we it, it would have um, needed something like an extra layer, be like a second vocal track, me doing like the clear heavy metal vocals on top of the death metal growl or some additional guitars sort of uh, going to go along with the, with the vocals to do it because it's it's so essential part of the song is the, is the vocal melody. So that was like, it, I just couldn't find a way to do justice to that song and make it work as, as, I, as I wanted to, because if I want, want to like pay an homage to the greatest heavy metal band, I don't, I don't want to like suck on it. <laughs> so, <it's, laughs> so maybe, maybe may I, I do, yeah, I, 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 maybe I pay my, like do my tribute to Rob Halford at some other point, but not this, in this band maybe. <laughs> Well, it, it's 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 nice that you're uh, th there. You're uh, comfortable enough to talk about uh, the the song that didn't make it to the record. Uh, sometimes, yeah. you know, you you want to put it aside and you want to forget about it because it kind of leaves a, a sour taste in your mouth. But uh, at, at least you guys tried it. Maybe down the road, maybe you never know. Maybe uh, at some point in time, you guys uh, maybe not that one specifically, but maybe another Judas uh, another Judas Priest song for a future record. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who knows? And I, like I said, it's a uh, the as it's it's so great band that like at some point, some something has to be done. Maybe in not in Hooded Minutes, but somewhere else. But yeah, <laughs> another story. <maybe. laughs> uh, one one last question for you. I, I I feel like every band when when you're putting together a record, uh, the record paints a picture of where the band is at that specific time. So if you look back at Hooded Menace and you look back at all the previous records, you can pinpoint exactly where the band was, where the mindset was and where they were with each and every single album. Uh, if, if down the road, when you look back at this record, wh what do you think is going to be the picture that this album is going to paint? Mm. <sighs> I, I think it's a, it's a kind of a, like a, if there's going to be like lots of albums coming out after this one at least this is a sign up for more like clear change on the on the sound of the the band like so, sort of a new new phase like the, the another era of the band sort of uh like i think that the two first albums they are like the first era and then comes the the next albums and stuff so Maybe also the last one, the also in Silla Silent Hello, it was more more like a it was like a, a sort of a, a, what is the word in English? I don't know, but somewhat like a, a stepping stone. Mm -hmm. the, and this one is the 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 one that makes makes the, the, the band. previous one yeah. opened the door. Yeah. This one you walk through the door. Yeah, yeah, sort of. Yeah, this is this is the door. I think. Yeah, and like. <laughs> very personal point of view i think this is the i feel like and i feel out right now but i i feel it like now but also i think we'll feel later on is that this is the album where i i remember all all those 80s heavy metal cheesy albums last was listening to <laughs> like and <laughs> always like when he when he started buying pink guitars and and listening to rat and stuff like that it's, it's a kind of a, yeah I, I i i i'm really out of really comfortable with that idea like i i think it's it's always good to have like your own way to do it like not pose the ready-made scripture of uh, how the band should, should do things so this is kind of a of course it's it's really it's a it's a lost person and his musical taste that like oozes out of the the whole whole material, but it's that way. It's I find it I respect it more because like he he want, he does what he wants to do, and I, I think it's like I said like uh, when we were talking about the ultra, it's I find it find it a bit 
bold move to have that those heavy metal elements and and the, the whole sound change this much sort of because it's a you know some some people with um especially when they when they have favorite albums like earlier on the discography and they have the idea of how the band should sound like all the changes they're always a bit like a, not risky because it's not a risk but uh it's a more like a it's it's always like interesting to find out who who gets behind and who finds on the board it's sort of and it, 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 so it's a like not caring about that thing and just doing what you will it's a it's a bold move and i respect that a lot and so it, this is kind of a uh, the thing i like about this album yeah it's, it's really an album from from himself to himself do you know what i mean like he's doing the album that he wants to do but also the album that he wants to hear so it's it's a very interesting it's it's a very yeah. interesting approach and and i think it works really well i i think you guys have a really wonderful record here i really like that that heavy metal influence and how predominant it is but that outro is really what clued me in because when i heard that outro i was like oh now i gotta go back and listen to it because i think i heard this before I, I i heard these things before i just they were a little bit more hidden so a really interesting yeah. album from a construction perspective to execution to the way it sounds congratulations on this record yeah yeah and i like especially with, when when i'm i have nothing to do with the songwriting i can i can be really <laughs> like, I like I like it a lot too. <laughs> you can take it's you not... can take all the praise. You take all the praise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I praise you. I praise it too. <laughs> <laughs> well, Harry, thank you very much for your time today. I really appreciate it. All the best, uh, and uh, good luck with the release on uh, August twenty seventh on Season of Mist. Yeah, thank you very much. It was my pleasure. Take care. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs>